Tracy from the Danbury Library here with another Mini Masters Virtual Art Studio. Today we're going to be learning about abstract artist Jackson Pollock. Are you ready to learn more about Jackson Pollock? Let's do it. Today's biography about Jackson Pollock was written by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan. Jackson Pollock, Art in Action. Jackson Pollock was a man of few words, a big man with a rough and tumble cowboy style. He was born in Cody, Wyoming, the youngest of five brothers. Hard times kept his family on the move to Arizona, then California, always looking for better opportunities. Finally, his mother insisted that they settle in Los Angeles, where she hoped a good education would help her son succeed in life. In high school, Jackson liked English and art, but he was too rebellious to be a good student. He was expelled twice, and after that, he wouldn't be allowed to graduate, although his art teacher convinced the school to let him come back for drawing and sculpture classes. He moved to New York in 1930 to study with the artist Thomas Hart Benton, who did energetic paintings of American life. Benton's use of rhythmic lines to show movement all over the canvas influenced the way Jackson painted. Later, Jackson said that Benton, a realist painter who disapproved of abstract art, was a good artist to react to. During the Great Depression in the 1930s, after the stock market had crashed and many people had lost their jobs, Jackson worked for a government-sponsored program that was part of the WPA, the Works Progress Administration. Artists were hired to paint pictures and murals for government buildings. He didn't earn much money, but he was used to being poor and it was an exciting time to be part of New York's art community. He began experimenting, painting, painting images from myths and his dreams, and spent hours in museums looking at artworks from Native American and Pacific Rim cultures. In 1941, the Museum of Modern Art invited Navajo medicine men to give demonstrations of their sand painting. The artist poured colored sand and patterns on the floor, and each painting was created anew and then destroyed. Jackson studied them closely. Before long, his canvases with thick layers of paint veiling the shapes and figures underneath started to attract attention. In 1945, Jackson married Lee Krasner, who was also a painter. Searching for a quieter life away from the competitive New York art scene, the couple moved to a Long Island village called Springs. Their new home was a rundown rural clapboard house. Lee said, the house was heated with coal stoves and had no hot water. Not until 1949, when the Museum of Modern Art had bought a second painting, did we call the plumber up the road and have heat and hot water put in. A small barn on the property was moved and turned into Jackson's studio. There in the winter of 1947, inspired by the light in the marshy landscape, he spread his canvas on the floor and began doing his most famous paintings large works called abstractions because they have no recognizable images. He called his paintings energy and motion made visible. When these works were first shown in a New York gallery in 1948, they turned the art world upside down. While some reviewers called him the best painter in America, another said his work looked like a plate of baked macaroni. Life magazine wrote an article presenting him as a new American rebel people flocked to see his next exhibition. Because of the way Jackson moved around the canvas, pouring paint from a brush or a stick, his artwork was labeled drip painting or action painting, thus the nickname Action Jackson. He and other abstract painters of his generation are called abstract expressionists. During the summer of 1950, Jackson painted some of his, mo his greatest works, including Lavender Mist, Number one. Sometime early that summer, a photographer named Hans Namath received permission from Lee and Jackson to, photog to photograph the artist in his studio. For the next few months, Namath took many photographs, including those of Jackson working on the painting on some of his most famous paintings. Namath still photographs in the 21 minute film he made form a unique record of the way the artist worked. By 1951, Jackson was moving away from his so-called drip paintings. Though he still painted in that style occasionally, 
shapes from nature, animals, and people began to reappear in his work. He was now famous, but he told friends that all the attention made him feel like a clam without a shell. His career was cut short by a fatal car crash in 1956. He died at age 44. Due to his groundbreaking paintings and those of other abstract expressionists, New York became the center of the art world and a new American art was born. Today's story is called Action Jackson by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan and illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. Action Jackson. In the afternoon, Jackson Pollock puts on his paint splattered boots and walks across the yard. The wind blows in the gardener's bay, bringing the scent of salt marshes and sea lavender. His eyes miss nothing, sunlight on the tree branches, tangled stalks of blueberry bushes, beetles crawling in the grass underfoot. Caw Caw, the crow he tamed, flies down and lands on his shoulder. His border collie, Gip, runs in circles demanding a walk, across the fields and down a country road to the wide sandy beaches. But Jackson turns and keeps going. The gray weathered barn used to be filled with rusty machinery old fishing gear, and broken tools. Now it's his art studio, a place for painting. Some artists paint, put a canvas on an easel or hang it on a wall. Not Jackson. He spreads his out like a sheet, smoothing it flat with his large hands. He wants his paintings to be big, big as the sky out west where he grew up, flat as the marshland behind the house. Sunlight pokes through the cracks in the boards and flies buzz in the dusty studio air. Sliding doors rattle on their frames. He sits, silent, on the floor, staring at the blank canvas. Some artists cover the canvas with a base coat of white paint. Not Jackson. He wants the paint to soak into the surface leaving bare patches peeking through the stains of color. Some painters use oil paint or watercolor. Not Jackson. He'll use ordinary house paint from the hardware store to make his painting. Some artists paint pictures of flowers or people or landscapes. Not Jackson. He expresses his thoughts and feelings directly on the canvas, calling it energy and motion made visible. And still he sits, surrounded by cans of enamel, brushes stiff with dried paint, knives, sticks, a spatula, and canvases, waiting. At last he stands. He chooses a stick and dips it into a can of syrupy paint. Slowly he circles the canvas, stepping around the edges, straddling the corners. Black lines form from a tangled web. Now he chooses a brush, working towards the middle. Sprays of color, tan, teal, yellow, and white. An athlete with a paintbrush, he uses his whole body to make the painting. Layers build with each gesture, new colors emerging, blending, and disappearing into wet surfaces. He swoops and leaps like a dancer, paint trailing from the brush that doesn't touch the canvas. I want to make a longer and longer line. I want to keep it going. Hours go by like minutes. Suddenly he feels exhausted, used up, and his inspiration gone. Things get in, a way, in the way of the flow, like roots blocking a soil line. He puts down the brush and goes into the house to help make supper, his mind filled with thoughts about the wet painting back on the studio floor. The next afternoon, Jackson prowls around the canvas, studying his work, but he doesn't pick up a brush. Instead, he walks the beach past the sandy marshes and the tall, Bartina grass that waves in the breeze. He spends hours sitting on a grassy dune watching the gulls. In the barn, the layers of paint dry. Almost a week passes before he dips a brush and begins his dance. What is he thinking? Does he see the sunlit beach, the pattern of waves, the interlacing branches of the trees, the lush summer grass outside his studio? 
I don't know where the pictures come from, they just come, and the paint flows. Like the Native American sand painters he saw as a boy out west, he moves around the canvas, coaxing the paint into loops and curves. On the floor, I am much more at ease. I can walk around it, work from the four sides, be in the painting. Fireworks splatter of rosy pink, twisting ropes of white, spangles of silver, a lavender glow where pink and blue black meet. Jackson likes to listen to jazz recordings in the evening. He likes musicians to improvise, inventing their own melodies as they play. While he paints, the notes spin over and over in his memory. Swish and swish again. The rhythm of the brush matches the rhythm of the music. If a penny fell out of his pocket, he would leave it. An insect lands in wet paint, and there it stays. Nails and tacks become part of the texture. He caresses the surface with sticky paint-stained hands. One, then two, handprints across the canvas. His eyes move up and down and back and forth. With light steps, he follows in the sweep of his brush. He stops and a pool of paint pauses. Paint, paint, and more paint. Dripping, pouring, flinging. The painting has a life of its own. I try to let it come through. Again, he stops. He climbs a ladder to look down at the whole canvas. Every muscle aches. But his eyes, his mind, and his heart know the painting is finished. Some people will be shocked when they see what he has created. Some angry, some confused, some excited, some filled with happiness they can hardly explain. But everyone will agree, Jackson Pollock is doing something original, painting in a way that no one has ever seen before. For the next few days, he and his wife, Lee, plant the vegetable garden. They drive into town in their Model A Ford. He digs for clams on the beach. On the weekend, friends drop by for a party. We'll take another week for the thick paint to dry. Then Jackson and Lee will tack the canvas to the studio wall. Jackson sits, silent, staring at the blank canvas spread on the floor of the barn, waiting. Soon he will dip his brush in the can of paint, lifting it high in the air to begin again. The end. Today we're going to be abstract expressionists like Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock didn't draw realistic shapes or people or, or objects. He used his thoughts and feelings to make art in motion. And today we're going to be using some paint, a piece of paper, and all sorts of objects. You could use some pipettes, or maybe some string, maybe some paint brushes, maybe a Q-tip. And we are going to be creating some abstract art. And it's all going to be based on any, anything that we're thinking about or feeling about. Jackson Pollock would take time to contemplate or look at his blank canvas and really think about what he wanted to paint. And then he would take a brush or another object and he would just start making lines and splattering it all over his paper. You may want to do this project outside, depending on how messy and how much movement you want to put into your painting. If you want to use your pipettes, you might want to water down your paint a little bit so that you can suck up the paint and splatter it on to your paper like Jackson Pollock did. Jackson Pollock would take his paint and walk around and flip it onto his canvas to make his abstract art. And that's what we're going to do.
Great work, everybody. I hope you had fun making some expressionist art like Jackson Pollock. I can't wait to see what you've created. Don't forget to sign up for our Beanstack app for our summer reading program and to log your minutes. And I'll see you next time. Bye!